We've got quite a laundry list in this video. I'm going to show you several things. Number one, how to add a router to GNS3 successfully, including idle PCing it so that you can add more and more and more. Second, I'm going to show you how to integrate secure CRT so you can use it with the tabs in conjunction with your GNS3 devices. It's a lot to cover. Let's get started. So let's get to it. This is assuming that GNS3 is already set up and configured as far as where the operating system is, that the operating system is decompressed. There's tons of videos on that. I want to show you how to add a router successfully once you've set up the basics. So we're going to say, I want to create a new project. We'll call this new project CLN. <laughs> CLN for Cisco Learning Network. I'm going to say, please save everything and my configs as well when we're done. And I'll click on OK. So now I've got this new project, and there's the actual URL telling me where it is. So I'm going to drag the routers over. I'm going to take the 3700, which I have an iOS image for, and it's showing me out of these details that my console port is port 2000. That's the third line down. Now, not too critical. We could right-click on this R1, say change the console port, and we could say you could change to any unused port you want. I like to use 2001 for router 1 and 2002 for router 2, but as long as you know what that port is, you're good to go. So there's one router. Let me drag out another one. This is the easy part. So there's router 2. If you take a look at the console port for router 2, it's saying it's using 2002. That's the third line down. So by default, we're good to go. We know what the ports are. And what we could do if we wanted to was build a connection. So I'm going to go to my cable manager and go to manual connections and simply connect FA0 here to FA0 there. That part is also the easy part. Now the hard part. Once we have these devices on, we could click on go and everything would start. That's not the way to do it. In a brand new network, we want to bring these up one at a time and make sure that the first one's completely up. And we've also done some basic configs before you bring up the second one the very first time. So we'll simply right click on this and we could click on start. And now R1 is in the process of starting. Also, you'll notice my CPU over on the right is going to be kicking up here quite a bit as it continues to start. I think I clicked on start. Pretty sure I did. Although it's not responding anymore. That's great. I love a good Windows box. All right, so I'm not going to panic yet. I'm going to let this sit there for just for a moment and uh, think about life. There we go. Okay, so it considered life in the background is starting all the Dynamips and everything else that's actually running this. So now it's started and my CPU will be going up in a moment. While it does that, let me go to Secure CRT. And here's Secure CRT. And if I want to open up a new, let me bring up my, uh, I want to toggle the menu bar. Let's go ahead and do a file and do a quick connect. There's a lot of options here, but Let's say we want to connect on Telnet, and the host is going to be our local computer, because our local computer is running the whole emulation. A good way to point to yourself is with this IP address, 127.0.0.1. That's us. And check this out. The default port, the well-known port for Telnet is 23, but we're going to go to the port we configured for our one. So it's always going to be our loopback address, 127.0.0.1, and then the port of your choice and then we can go ahead and click on connect. Now down here, it has open in a tab, and that's how you open it in a tab in Secure CRT. If you don't have this option down here, the older, older versions of Secure CRT didn't have that feature. So we'll click on connect, and poof, we're now connected to R1. And I'm gonna say, no, I don't wanna do the initial script, and I'm gonna let it cook for a moment. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my favorite little tool called Notepad, I'm gonna pump in some basic configuration commands on this device and the ones that the one that's the most important is this right here no exact timeout will or will set the timeout to be infinite it will never time out what happens a lot of times is the cisco router gets waiting at a prompt for a user to press enter or do something and that's when cpu can go bazonkers so that one right there line console zero no exact time very important so it's not waiting for you at the console prompt even with that you still, when you first boot up your routers, even after they're configured, you need to press enter, get a console up fairly quickly and press enter, and that'll help as well. So here we are sitting at this router. I'm gonna simply take this entire one to the left, control A, copy all that, and I'm gonna paste it in right here. And that puts the basic config in, and there's R1. 
And we do this. Now, before we continue on, my CPU utilization is doing incredibly great. That's just lucky. Once we've done this on R1, we would do this. Save your configuration on R1. Once it's saved, right click on R1 and then go to idle PC and say yes. Now your CPU, check out the CPU meter. It's going to go <clears throat> bazonkers for a moment. And if I had five routers all running and I was already at 100% CPU, it wouldn't be able to find a good idle PC for me. And it's a very good chance that all of your routers are going to share the same idle PC. So we'll let it calculate. We'll drop down. We'll grab one with an asterisk. Here's nine. And we'll click on OK. Once we've done that, we've selected an idle PC with an asterisk next to it. Look at the CPU. It should go back to almost nothing. And then we're going to go to router two. And we're going to right click on router two, start it. We'll go back to secure CRT and we'll open up a new connection file. And actually there's more than one way to do this. Let me show you another way to do it. We could also click on this button right here. I scroll up a little bit so you can all see it. So I'll click here and I can create a new contain or new object for that. So here's CLN and let me make i uh, I'll just actually I'll copy that one. So I'll copy that one and I'll paste it. This is just a little shortcut. And I'm going to call this one R2. I'm going to call that first one R1 because that's what it is. So on R2, I'll go to properties of R2 and I'm going to specify that for Telnet, I'm going to use port 2002. That's it. 2002 is the logical port we assigned to this router, and that's how we would get PuTTY or secure CRT to that correct device. So we'll click on OK, and open down here we have Open in Tab. So I'll just double click it, and that'll open up in a new console. And there's the prompt for R2. I'll say, no, I don't want to do the initial config. I will copy this, press Enter a few times, and then paste that in and call it R2. Now, those interfaces are up. I could put IP addresses and we could ping back and forth, and that's not the big exciting part. But here's the thing we need to do. When I bring this second router up, again, just initially, I put a basic configuration on it. I want to save that config, and then once the save is done, give it a few seconds, I would then right-click on R2, and I would do the idle PC. It's fine-tuning is what it is, and you'll do that for every device you bring up, and then once you have all your devices up, you should be in good shape. Even if you have five or six or seven routers running at the same time, you should still be in good shape if you've done them one at a time and brought them up. So I'm going to say yes. It's going to go CPU is going to go crazy for a second. And the more routing protocols and the more traffic you have, the CPU will increase. So let's see if we can find an idle PC, although the previous one was sweet. There was no problem with it. It was really, really low CPU-wise. So let's go ahead and see what it says. And we'll take three. Anyone with an asterisk will do. So now that that's done, take a look at our CPU on the top right. It should go back down to really, really low again. And then we can just complete the process. Now, once we've done that, click on this button right here, which is save. That'll save your configurations and also all the idle PCs, the .NET files, everything, so you could bring it back up. That is how you integrate your routers into Secure CRT, it's also how you can stage and bring up your routers one at a time. One last thing, if we wanted to go to Edit and Preferences, one of the options we have is that when Dynamip starts, you can actually set a timeout. And that timeout is right here. It's the waiting time between start of every device. So if you wanted to set a timeout of 10 seconds and you had six devices, it would start one, wait 10 seconds, start another one, start another one. So it would take a full minute for your devices to come up. But if you have the situation where just bringing them all up at one time at the same time is too much effort for your computer to handle, you can actually set this delay to a bigger value. And that's it. I'm going to click on cancel because I didn't make any changes. Uh, one last thing, let's put some IP addresses on there and verify. So we have the R1 and R2. So we'll just go to R1. And I cannot type IP address. We'll give it a 10 address, and we'll go to R2 in this tab right here.
and then we'll do a ping. And the first one should be eaten by ARP and the rest are successful. And there we go. The other cool thing is we can also do packet captures on these. You can right click and say capture and you can actually put the, the data into Wireshark. I do that a lot for training as well. So thanks very much for the request. That's exactly how you set up new routers inside of GNS3 one at a time, put the basic config on, save it, idle PC it and add the next. Now, once this is saved, I can bring this up on a, on a fly and just boom, have at it. And I don't have to go through all the pain. So thanks very much and have a great, great rest of the day.